<laughs> all right. We all good? Sweet. Well, come on in, everyone. Hope you're all doing good today. I am McDysis, and this is Clock Tower. Uh, this is a game, maybe you haven't heard about it, maybe you do know it. It's a cult classic uh, Japanese horror game, and it's one of my personal favorites for a few reasons. Um, that being said, before we kind of dive on into this, I guess I'll ask, although I'm pretty sure I know the answer, uh, what one? It was ending S, that one. Yes. I had a feeling. It looked like yep. it was winning. We're going to do ending, uh, ending S. Um, yeah, so we're going to hop here into one moment here. Uh, I just want to explain one little thing, because this game is an RNG um, just mess. There's a lot of randomness in this. Uh, the estimate might vary as a result of this, so hopefully we'll get some good luck. Maybe we'll uh, maybe get something good here, right? <laughs> one can hope. All right, anyway, uh, we can count down in a moment here. Uh, whenever we're ready, how about three, two, one, let's go. All right, so Clock Tower is a weird game. This came back in, in 1995, before Resident Evil did, and it is a point-and-click horror game. Uh, it also came out on the uh, Super Famicom Super Nintendo. It was exclusive to Japan. So if you see the Japanese text, that is why. Um, that being said, this game controls a little bit differently, because while it's point-and-click, uh, I'm not going to be using the cursor here that you see a lot of the time for movement. I'll be using it for actions, like grabbing this box. Which, by the way, if you want to see a full sentence, if we see dot, 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 that's bad. Full sentence, that's good. Okay, so kind of going along this why that's good, uh, that means we now have the key to the back half of the game. That we need the West Wing key to get to the West Wing. I know that's pretty obvious, but you know how it goes. Um, if it's not there, it is in a very different hiding spot. However, depending on this category, um, you know, if we don't get the good luck later, that's going to be bad. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the best parts about this is uh, Clock Tower is a game that likes to make a grand entrance. And we're about to get a big one right now with our first major skip and uh, probably one of the most iconic uh, gaming moments of the 90s. There's the Scissor Man, and we're going to be doing Bobby Skip. This is Bobby Barros. He's crashing down Anne. Anne is now dead. Uh, we're also going to be doing a skip here because this game has actions and reactions. Bobby killing me is a reaction. T talking to the stairs, that's an action. Uh, I talk to the stairs, that is an action. Then I cancel it by passing Bobby and I'm able to run directly through him. He doesn't touch me in the slightest. And now we're going directly to the West Wing. Uh, it's weird because that trick is a little bit RNG. Uh, Bobby can decide to just turn around and attack you. It's not an immediate death, luckily. You just kind of have to fight him off. Uh, we're going to be going with the safe route. Um, there is a wildly difficult world record route that we can do where you go upstairs first. However, we are entering the RNG part. So there are five randomized rooms in the West Wing. There is the Crow Room, the Library, the Pink Bathroom, um, the piano room and the empty door. Uh, we want to see the library and the crow room. So I'm going to be just checking these rooms and we're hoping for the best. Uh, we're looking for books. I got the crow room. We're going to need that later, so that's good. Uh, alternatively, you would get the first two rooms uh, immediate, but considering how this goes, and I don't think I should bet on a uh, terrible luck-based thing for a marathon run, I figured we we're going to search them all until we find them. Which, we found the pink bathroom. We have two of the five down. We already know where the crow room is. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, how rough this gets, uh, if you're grinding for world record, it is a one in 80 chance on the set seeds alone. Uh, by the way, tripping is RNG, that just happens. Uh, also, you may be wondering, what's the uh, colored portrait in the bottom left? Uh, that's like a sanity meter. This game has it. It has no actual effect on the run. But it's neat. You get to see uh, Jennifer in different colors, like orange and uh, blue. Also, empty door. Uh, we have two more rooms. I kind of hope this is the library. If not, it's fine. But let's see. Library. OK. So I'm going to actually click it right there. It's going to immediately throw me back here. And the best way of getting rid of Bobby is, well, he's like 10, and he's afraid of books. So we're just going to do this. I thought he's just gone. All right, so we, ah, oh, I got that RNG. It's fine. OK, so we are on a staff game. This is going to be rough. So first things first, I need to immediately think about the routing. Uh, this is going to be fun. How about we get the crow room last, because that was the empty door. So the staff game, let's talk about this. There is a 50% chance to get a demon idol and a 50% chance to get a staff. If I get the demon idol, Jennifer immediately knows how to use that, so we can just you know, start going to the end game immediately. But since we got the staff, Jennifer doesn't know how to use the staff because she just doesn't. Anyway, here's a cool skip. It's called whole skip. You uh, can run over this just magically. She just floats. Uh, she has the power to do that. She's magical, I guess. Um, oh, wrong. I'm used to staff route. 
But yeah, um, this game gets kind of weird, and we're about to see it break a lot more, because with a point-and-click horror game, you're probably imagining, oh, how much can you really be doing in a game like this? You can start doing a lot more as we develop things with the text box at the bottom. Uh, the reason this is there is because the game doesn't quite know what to do when you start messing with the text box. Uh, naturally, uh, this game is going to have certain events, like Jennifer's going to be talking, like, oh, hey, look, that's a, that's a pipe. Like, well, we're going to be talking about this pipe in a moment here. Although, well, first, I need to actually grab the rope. But you'll be seeing what I'm talking about because while actions are dictated by the text, we can actually overwrite that immediately. So I'm actually going to grab this. I don't normally grab this because I would normally have an item by this point, but we want to do this first because we're already here. So this is going to be a skip called Tech Skip. I hope I land it. All right, cool, I got it. So the skip here is pretty easy. You activate the action menu and the item menu at the same time. Uh, you may notice now that the item menu is open while Jennifer is moving. That's not supposed to happen. Um, she'll have a comment at the end that's like, oh, hey, there's a secret room here. However, I'm just going to mess with the item menu, and I overwrote the text, and now it's just gone, and it finishes immediately. This is going to happen a lot now. I don't need to read anything. Uh, normally, uh, there's going to be a whole scene here. We have to like, talk to all this stuff. Uh, the original version of the game, you only have to talk to the spag. It's like 12 seconds to read it. We're not going to do that. Uh, reading takes a long time in these games. So I'm going to do that. And hey, look, uh, we're, we're out. <laughs> Nice and easy. Uh, and in case you're wondering who this is, by the way, uh, this is her dead dad. Uh, this is the truth of the game. Uh, in order to beat the game and get the S ending, you need a couple of parameters. One, you need the truth about the castle. You need to know what's going on here. So you find Jennifer's dead dad. There's a note that says, hey, they killed us. Uh, don't trust them. So we just ignored it entirely. We just like walked in there for a second, just stared at it. It's like, OK, I know everything now. Uh, the next one, we need to learn the truth about Bobby. This one's going to get a little bit more complicated, but it will be pretty easy. Also, we have a, the, uh, the whole skip once again, but now I can use the item text instead of the floor text. Uh, now that we have items, we're going to break the game a lot more, like I said. Uh, we're going to be starting to do a trick called lag reduction. Uh, the idea here is that this game has certain lag frames, which is kind of weird for a Super Nintendo game, I guess. But if I push the inventory button while going over those frames, Jennifer will start running faster. It's going to become a lot more apparent in the longer rooms. But it will be something to keep an eye out for if you see me mashing the button. Also, there's a lot at once. Uh, we'll have a moment here where we kind of have a nice running area. We can slow down a moment. But this is going to be the doll fight. It's a little bit RNG, but what I want is I want to run past the doll, run back. I want the doll to immediately attack. It works usually. That's the best way I can put it. It's kind of awkward. Anyway, let's see how it goes. Nope. All right, we're going to have to wait, uh, hopefully not too long. Uh, I guess the doll really wants to be a part of GDQ here. Oh, there we go. OK. Also, we're introduced to a new thing here. The doll just runs and the one dies. But uh, you notice the screen is flashing the bottom left. Those are panic events. Panic events in this game are something where you need to match the button enough times, or else you're not going to be able to succeed. You'll die. Uh, it's like a, oh, pass the test. Also, with the randomized rooms, this was the last one. Uh, this is the piano room, which has the staff behind this. We know it's going to be there because I know we don't have the demon idol. And there it is. We might also get a little fun scare here if Bobby wants to uh, be cheeky. Let's see if we get it. No, he just didn't show up. It's randomized scares. Kind of fun back in the day. All right, so we're going to be able to see the lag reduction in action here. You can kind of see Jennifer just run away. She just vanishes. She just runs really fast and doesn't want to be on camera anymore. And this will happen a lot more. Although, I don't want to do it too much on longer stretches, because sometimes there'll be a door I need to get to, and it's like right here. But it's neat. Uh, anyway, right now, since I mentioned we did get the staff game, this is going to be a little bit more rough. Uh, I mentioned we don't know how to use the staff, so we're going to have to do some backtracking. Uh, this is luckily not too bad that we got on the second floor. But the backtracking is going to require us to get like two additional keys. This is going to be the gold key and the silver key. Uh, it also requires us to get insecticide, because one of these is hidden behind a meat locker. There's a lot of fun lore in the Clock Tower series. Um, and a lot of this goes into, I guess, well, hold on. Here. It, that was weird. <laughs> OK, we got it. The hardest grab in the game, the pesticide. 
But yeah, we're gonna be able to use this to go into the meat locker, and we haven't really talked about the story of this game. And the best way I can describe the story of this game is, if you've ever watched the movie Phenomena, it's that. Uh, it's a Dario Argento movie, which uh, you, you could probably know Suspiria earlier with the ceiling crash. But to make it even simpler, if you haven't watched that movie, um, orphans are adopted and then they're killing them to eat them. It's cannibalism. That's the story. It's a horror game. It, it's about as horror as you get, right? <laughs> so we don't want that to happen. Uh, anyway, uh, Jennifer's going to be taking the longest time on the stairs. So I think this is a good time for a couple of donations. All right, but before we get to donations, I am pleased to announce that we have passed $100,000 for AGDQ 2024. Thank you all so much. We have an anonymous $1,200 donation that says 100K hype. Uh, one more. All right, we have $25 from Telos. To Ecdysis, your speed runs from the crypt is the best way to fall asleep. Keep it up and have a great clock tower run and save everyone. Cheers. All right, so we have the pesticide here. I did the tech skip because we some text afterward. Uh, by the way, there's all the, the meat from the other uh, orphans that they killed earlier. Back, back to the orphan thing. So we, now we have the gold or silver key. This game's kind of weird, too, because there's some inventory that doesn't show up. Also, there, the, the ham is in here. If you ever want to get the ham, it's in this fridge. Uh, that's A ending. We don't need to do that in S ending because we don't go to the garage. Uh, but we will have to go to the two rooms here as well. I'm actually kind of hoping that we're not going to run into too many issues because Mary can spawn randomly. Uh, there's a random enemy. Luckily, we got the first floor. And oh, there's Mary. Uh, we're actually now scared of Mary because we know the truth about her. We know she's going to try to kill us. So if we stay in this room, she'll just stab us, which is bad. Uh, a ending, you would actually get poisoned here, uh, but luckily uh, we did the, you know, we did the proper stuff earlier, so she just comes straight at us. Uh, it's actually a fun enemy, but it's kind of weird because I think she can show up more than once. It's entirely RNG, so let's hope she doesn't. Also, I'll answer a quick question about, uh, this probably never came up, but some people may have played Clock Tower casually. A lot of people ask, oh, what does the phone ringing mean? Like, there's a phone ringing. Oh, it's nothing. It literally just says, line dead if you try it. So, if you hear the phone, nothing's there. All right, so now we have the key. It's weird because you have to get a key to get a key to get the answer for another key. It's, it's a series of getting keys. And we have them all now. So something I want to mention about uh, this game as a whole and one of the biggest skips we're going to be coming up on is a lot of you who may play this game or puzzle games, there's usually these end game items. And these end game items are like, oh, if you don't have the exact things, you might die or you might not be able to pass a big puzzle. Uh, we're going to ignore that. Uh, we'll see you in a bit, but we're going to be doing a skip that allows us to bypass the entirety of the end game like death puzzle. And it's going to be quite neat. Uh, by bringing it up now, because normally what that would require is you'd have to look all around the mansion, you'd have to find perfume, and you'd also have to find uh, a rope. Um, funny enough, I haven't grabbed those items in a long time, and we don't need them. Uh, what we do need, though, is the ability to learn how to use the staff, which is right behind this. Uh, this is kind of the downside of the staff. You have to go all the way to this room, which all the backtracking we did, um, like I said, also another tech skip, all the backtracking we did could have been immediately rectified if we got the demon idol, but you don't always get it. It was pretty much a coin flip. We didn't win the coin flip. <laughs> but luckily, now, now we're back on track. We're now we're, we're caught up. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, while we get back to the chrome really quick, how about we get uh, two more donations? All right. We have $25, or sorry, $20 from EGP Noodles. AGDQ 2024 is already so hype, and I can't wait to see Clock Tower finally at a main event. Good luck with the run, Ecdysis. You got this. We have $25 from CC. Did you know that crows can recognize human faces? They also hold grudges. Good luck on the Clock Tower, Ek. Cheers. All right, so we're going to be heading back over to the crow room. Oh, we've done a lot. Um, the doll, by the way, I, I kind of glossed over what we were doing in that room. Uh, we had to get a special key to kind of get to the finale. Uh, the finale is like an underground cave, and you need to get a lot of the stuff. Also, Jennifer's going to be kind of like zooming off the camera again. Let's see here. It's kind of funny because it's actually a timing-based thing, but I don't know the timing because I have no idea how to be able to tell this timing. So it's faster just to mash it. 
All right, I believe the first room was the crow room earlier. We found that almost immediately. So once we're right here, uh, we can get the final parameter for S ending, and then we can go straight to the end of the game. Oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, we do the text tip once again. You're going to notice you're immediately going to get the item setting to read text. And now we have to free the crow. Uh, the crow is one of the important factors of getting the good ending. Uh, the crows are very important. And funny enough, they're like both A ending and S ending, so the crows are always saved. Always save the animals, right? <laughs> All right, so the crow is now free. And now we can head right to the end game. This is actually a nice room as well, because uh, the, well, some of the rooms are RNG. The rooms that are not are always the middle rooms in the West Wing. So I talked about this room being RNG. The next one is going to be the ceremony room. If you did everything right, there's going to be some dialogue where Jennifer's like, oh my god, I recognize this room, which we just saw like a painting of it, which there it is. Which I feel like, you know, she probably could have just done this easily by just jamming the staff into a vase. Like, how many places can a staff go in this room, right? But, you know, there it is. We're all good around the underground. So, let's talk about this endgame skip, shall we? Now that we're in the underground, there is going to be a guard dog. Uh, the dog is an instant kill if you do not have the perfume and the robe. In case you're wondering what the hint is, you will see a mysterious figure walk past the dog. And you're supposed to try to match what that figure is as a bit of a disguise. Which is this right here. Uh, first things first, I'm going to uh, skip the dog barking, or like growling, and then we use this text box right here to run past the death trigger and run past the stopping point afterward. I'm now going to button mash uh, massively to get some uh, lag reduction here. In a moment, we're going to get some text. Uh, we're going to see our dead friend. We're immediately going to ignore her because talking to our dead friend takes time. Uh, you can see she's there. We're just immediately leaving. No, no time for sympathy. We're just going to skip that. And uh, hey, look, we're out of there. And now we're in the finale. <laughs> So usually at this point, uh, I'd say um, the dog skip is one of the harder tricks in the game. It's weird because while it didn't look hard, uh, there's a lot that can go wrong in that skip. Uh, one thing is if you do it too early, you soft lock the game. You quite literally can't move anything. She won't move, uh, you just are stuck there. Um, that's because they're expecting you to use items we don't have. We didn't grab any of them. We only have these two items right now, which, you know, good for us. Uh, also, uh, uh, total segue. Um, here's the cradle under the stars. In case you're wondering, uh, this game is going to be more off the rails. Uh, here's a, uh, well, cradle under the stars. It's uh, a giant baby. Anyway, uh, the lore of this game gets more ridiculous because uh, this is just like a 10 year old boy in a shell of a giant baby. So it's, you ever watch Evangelion or something like that? Also panic event, so let's not die. While I'm explaining this, he's like piloting it. It's like an orphan meat mech. He's just covered in it. And it's, it's certainly a plot point, isn't it? Uh, anyway, there's something like 80 button presses during this panic event. It's pretty easy to do, and it's going to look like we failed. We didn't. Uh, if we fail, I'm going you know, to mash faster. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> But, well, no, we did it right if she goes all the way up the hill. Um, bad would be slipping. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, that little tin right there, that is a thing of kerosene. Oh, hey, look, uh, it's gone. It, it just, he's on fire. <laughs> all right, this point, we're pretty much home free. Uh, time will be coming up at the end of the action sequence coming up. Uh, we'll have an elevator, we'll have a little segment with Bobby, and then we're pretty much home free of the clock tower. It's a pretty quick one uh, run. Uh, I do hope that you all enjoyed it so far. Uh, I still have to make sure I pick the right elevator. P you know, you can choose it wrong, and it goes bad. Um, as well, a lot of people do wonder, uh, oh, are, are the endings RNG or anything here? No, uh, you can get any ending you want uh, if you make the right decisions. Uh, a lot of them are just kind of based on a variety of factors of, oh, did you find out the truth about Mary? Did you find the truth about Bobby? And, you know, whether you did or you didn't. And this game has a lot of endings. It's like S through, um, yeah, I think it's like H, which is nine. There's like nine endings. All right, we have one more panic event, and then we're done. So we have to ride the elevator up. If we did it right, uh, we'll be leaving this elevator. If we did it wrong, we'll be dying in the elevator. So let's see. All right, looks like we're good. We just have to pass the panic event, and we're home free. How about we get one more quick donation while Bobby's chasing us? All right, we have two hundred and fifty dollars from Crow. <laughs> hey, Ectisis. 
Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so S ending. Uh, oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, there's a whole thing that Lot told us her dead friend. She was like, oh, if you start the clock tower, Bobby will stop. And then he just like panics. He's freaking out because he has no concept of time. He doesn't like speedrunning. It's too fast. So now Bobby dies. He just fell off the cliff. Uh, but you know what? We have our friend Laura there. She's alive. She's on the ground, just kind of chilling up here. I don't know why she's up here, but she thought it would be a good idea. Also, I like how she just like lies down for a bit. like. Good thing Bobby just panicked, right? Uh, anyway, time coming up right when this panic event ends, and let's see, and time, there we go. And there's our, there's our crows, they're all right there. So we can look at the ending a little bit here. Uh, I do believe it was showcase coming up. Um, what time did I get, by the way? Looks like your final time was 1917. Sweet. Okay, I like that. Actually, uh, cool. Even with the, with the worst RNG, it still worked. I was, I was worried about the estimate. That staff game can get really rough if the rooms get a mix. Also, Mary just fell off the top due to the crows. Uh, we'll get a nice view with the clock tower, and then I believe we have our uh, glitch D incentive, right? Yes, the glitch D incentive was indeed met. All right. So how about we just get a quick look at the clock tower here? It's a, it's a really nice scene. We have our living friend. Uh, this ending isn't canon, though. The sequel, like, everyone dies. Like, oh, only Jennifer lived. But you know what? For GDQ, she's alive. And then she should be showing up, like, right, what, like, right here. It's like, you know, SNES loads. Or Super Famicom, I guess. Yeah, the top of the clock tower. So, the glitch D incentive is going to be a little bit fun. I'll take a little bit of explaining to start with, but it's going to be something really neat about Clock Tower. And it's kind of funny, because if you don't like running an RNG category, we're going to remove that. We're going to move all the RNG. All right, if we can get that timer reset, I'll reboot the console. We got to see the ending here. Let's uh, check this out, shall we? Okay, so before we begin, I want to go over something. Um, Clock Tower has an ending list. As you play this game, it'll give you a bunch of, hey, you've cleared the game. It gives you S ending, which is actually hidden, and they'll give you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Now, in case you're wondering, a lot of people who get into speedrunning wonder, and if this is a cult classic thing of Clock Tower, there is an ending where if you've ever thought, hey, dummy, why don't you just get in the car and leave? There's an ending that does that. That's called the H ending. Uh, normally what would happen is you'd get Ann killed, and then you would immediately bolt to the car, and then you would die because, uh, you know, you left all your friends behind, which is bad. Don't do that. However, what's going to happen is... Traditionally, the game doesn't want you removing any, you know, they don't want you avoiding friend deaths. There's always going to be a way of killing a friend, and the game's, all the endings are actually tied to these friend deaths. Um, so, throughout the game, you killed Anne last time. You can kill Laura. A lot always dies. She's not considered a friend for some reason. She's just there. But it's always Anne or Laura. And the three ways of killing them are going to be either in the bathroom, which you may have seen it uh, in many casual plays, um, the, shan the sky ceiling, which... That was there earlier. But there's also one more people don't talk about. And we'll get to that in one moment. Anyway, if we can count down, if we're all ready. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so this category has no RNG. What we're going to be doing is going left immediately. There's going to be a room here. This room right here. Um, has, is actually a door, and it leads to a foyer. A lot of people do not know this. There's a rock right up here in this area. Uh, this can be used to break this wall. Now, the foyer, you usually end up there after a, uh, during ending A because you'll end up in the shed and then get kicked out to the foyer. However, you can get out there early. Now, I will take a brief moment to show. I will, I guess we went a little bit uh, underestimate. I do apologize if I go over it. I just want to make sure you see because you might not believe me otherwise. So normally, if you go through here, what will happen, I'm not going to do anything, is this. You'll get a scream, right? And then you see Anne drowning. We're not going to play all this. This takes forever. Anne takes too long to drown. That's slow. We're not doing that. So Anne dies. We don't want that. Anne dying is bad. We want to save our friends, right? Uh, luckily, this game has a generous continue system. It's going to put me right back in the courtyard. Now, what this game does is the moment Anne dies is a very specific trigger on the ground. Now, Jennifer, you can see really quick, takes these wide turns. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pass this tree and just do this. So by doing that movement, you can see that uh, Anne never died. 
We can just run right past it. And uh, hey, look, she's she's alive. Awesome. Okay. We, 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 yeah. Uh, as well, there's a box here. Uh, I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna do a glitch. Uh, we're gonna run past. We're gonna run through the box. Normally, you have to move it. Jennifer doesn't want to move things. Uh, right now, we're gonna go a little bit fancy with this run. Normally, you do a lot of lag reduction the moment you get there. Uh, it's actually really difficult as a category because you have to lag reduction and do that without being able to see, and it's wild. Also, now we're in here. If you recognize this room, this is where Anne died from the ceiling. Except, you know, I'll even go over here just to kind of show it off. Um, yeah, there's there's no ceiling crash. The, nothing happened. No one died. Everyone's alive right now. Now, at this point in the game, there are two ways of beating it. Either one, you go all the way through the game and go to the end elevator, or you go to the car. And right now, we're going to be going to the car. This is the glitched D ending, which I'll explain why it's glitched D at the end of this. Uh, but first things first, we're going to be doing a little skip right here. I'm actually going to be using uh, tech skip to get the key immediately. We're going to go to the car, and we're going to do two, three um, uses here. Two of them need to be tech skip because this is long. It's like, I think it's like eight seconds. It's like 12 seconds. And then you have to use the key immediately. So I want to make sure I land these. Got, all right, got two, two over two. And time will be coming up on the third usage. And then I'll kind of explain once the run's actually done what this does. And uh, time, there we go, glitch team. She is gonna be leaving, she's gonna crash right through that wall, and she is out of there. So normally whenever you beat this ending, it gives you like, oh, hey, credits to the car. You may notice, why is it a black screen? Oh, the credits are gonna start scrolling up, you see? Oh, up oh, there it is, produced. Um, I'm not going to play through all these credits because that would be really long. However, I do want to show you something once again. Now, obviously, I have owned this copy of Clock Tower quite literally longer than I've been speedrunning. This is my ever first speed game. I've been honored to show for GDQ. Um, but with the ending list here, if you did all of that with zero friends dead, you would get the D ending. Meaning, it took me, uh, what was my time there? Like, like two and a half minutes, like three minutes? Yeah, time was a bit late, but it looked like a little bit over two minutes. A little bit over two minutes? All right, yeah, a little bit over two minutes. A world record in that category is like a 151. You could be clock tower in under two minutes without killing a single friend. And then if you did that, the game doesn't know what to do because you didn't kill any friends. So it just gives you the D ending. Now, if you tried beating all of the game, it would give you the F ending, which is, I guess, weird because it's like, oh, you never solved the truth. You cheated, so this kills you in the elevator, which is kind of weird but fun. Um, anyway, uh, that was fun to show. I hope you enjoyed the glitch D ending incentive. I know it was a bit quick. It was a neat way of breaking Clock Tower. And I hope that you enjoyed this game. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites. It's the first game I ever sped ran, and I'm honored to show it to you. And thank you all for so much for watching.